verse number 14 and 15 you know you might think why i am going back again there is a reason because chapter 6 you know last week i talked about the chapter 6 the model of prayer and today i'm going back to do chapter 5 every time when you read the bible you get more revelations and this morning time i feel like you know i have to preach this message because i feel like the spirit of god is is leading the church into different dimension and uh, you know god is giving you a larger preach picture what i was speaking for last uh, few months actually probably you might think you know especially when it comes into be attitudes all those nine ten things it's a very simple thing it's a fundamental thing it's a sunday school thing but these are the basic foundation of the christian faith and um, not only that this basically gives a window to understand the larger picture of the kingdom of god i hope you are um, at least uh, some of you are really getting what i am what i speak and uh, what i was speaking all throughout this month this morning time um, probably we will read this passage and uh, i will explain it um danny probably you can give to someone uh, matthew chapter 5 verse number 30 13 uh, yes go ahead but if the salt loses its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lamp stand and give it it gives light to all who are in the house amen all right all right i want everybody to stand up No, I was not satisfied with the reading of that word. Everybody open their Bible. Shall we all read? Read loudly. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. you are the light of the world a city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and to give its light to all in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so that you that they may see your good works and give a glory to your father who is in heaven please be seated Amen. the sermon on the mount this morning on as i already mentioned the topic is slightly going to change you know chapter 5 to 7 it is basically sermon on the mount okay i will start from there why sermon on the mount is very important for the children of god number one reason this was spoken by jesus alone the direct word of jesus you know the bible it is written by 40 writers but when it comes into the sermon on the mount from chapter 5 to 7 it is directly spoken by jesus that means if jesus will be here in bika church in this morning time jesus is going to preach a message the message will be called as sermon on the mount praise the lord hope you understand the seriousness of it and now why sermon on the mount is serious so this leads into a larger picture sermon on the mount is not going to finish with the fight you know chapter 5 to 7 this sermon on the mount is taking into another shift another gear into a kingdom of god basically that means during jesus ministry in earth 
he preached about a message. That message basically called as the kingdom of God message. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What is basically kingdom of God? You know, I don't need to explain what is basically kingdom of God. We all are born again Christian. Most of you are born again Christian. We are baptized, infilled by the Holy Spirit experience. And we are waiting for his coming. And we are the part of that kingdom business. Hallelujah. God has called you from the, uh, from the darkness to the light. The, the kingdom of light. And we all are part of that kingdom of light. And uh, you know, let me go further. You know, chapter 5, verse number 3 to 10, the previous weeks or previous months, what basically, hope you, you know, at least some of you can reflect what was the message, what Jesus was speaking. What was that? Hallelujah. It was the kingdom message, basically. All right. Today, this morning time, I wanted to, I wanted to introduce a theme, a, you know, okay, okay. I wanted to stick on with the sermon here. All right. As I already mentioned, the kingdom of God message or a kingdom of God has a lot of mysteries. The kingdom of God has a lot of mysteries. That's why Matthew chapter 13 verse number 11 says, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. We know Jesus was telling to his disciple, the mysteries of the kingdom has given to you, not to the crowd, basically. The crowd just came for uh, food or uh, healing or some deliverance, and they just, after that, they just leave Jesus. But the disciples, they always was with Jesus 24 into 7, and Jesus was giving this mystery, the secret of the kingdom of God to them. This morning time, so we are begin to, going to study, going to start the mysteries of the kingdom of God, basically. So, all right, okay. So the word this morning time, I'm going to speak, is basically the kingdom identity. All right. I was thinking, a lot of youth, I was thinking, but there are a few. Can you, everybody can say kingdom identity. Didn't say. What is identity? Identity, according to Webster Dictionary, identity is a distinguishing character or personality of an individual. That means identity is the the one which is making you as a person or that makes you as a character that gives you a personality of an individual very simple so when i talk about uh, identity three words are very important number one identity number two character number three function so these three words please remember this morning because i am I will repeat it again and again, these three words, identity, character, and the function. So this morning, I, as I said, we are going to open the window of the kingdom of God mystery. So these three words are basically important to understand the mystery of the kingdom of God. What is your identity? Anybody can say, what is your identity? Okay, Christian. All right. Child of God. Born again. All right. We all, you know, we all have an identity, basically, shaped by our culture, our parents, our language, the place where we lived or place we are living currently, and all these things, so and so. So we are shaping a basic identity. So that means uh, we all have an identity. We are male. Female, human being, just said evangelical or Pentecostal, Protestant, non-denominational, American, Indian. All those are our identities. And this identity, as I already mentioned, 
shaped by the culture, the surroundings where we lived. At the same time, identity basically, you know, we can choose our identity. We can choose because we live in a very, um, you know, uh, democratic country like uh, United States of America. So we can choose our identity. That's why people choose their identity as asexual, bisexual, homosexual, all this thing. Because they can choose their identity. But at the same time, as you all said one word, you said Christian, born again, child of God, that is totally different identity. What is that basically? That is an identity that was given by God. Are you with me? All right. Okay. From this moment on, stick on with me. Okay. You have been received or given an identity as a kingdom citizen that is called the child of God. The daughter of God. The sons of, son of God. We all received that identity. How many of you received that identity? Can I see your hands? Anybody else? Aaron? No? Anybody else? See, let me see your hands. Let me see, Timon. I think, did I say something right now? Did you hear something, what I said? Grace, did you hear what I said? What is your identity? Okay. We all have an identity, as I already mentioned. As a son of God. But in order to function as a son of God, there is a character formation is very important. Praise the Lord. You know, now in 21st century, a lot of Christians don't go to church. They believe church is not necessary. Reason? Because they can live as themselves, you know, they can live as they, their own. And they know, they, they read the Bible and they just wanted to go home, you know, wanted to go to heaven after some time. But in order to go to heaven, after taking water baptism, after infilling with the Holy Spirit experience, very importantly, there is an important factor which is called uh, the character. Character formation. Why church? One of the important factors for the church, basically this is the place that your character which is formed. Praise the Lord. Now as a pastor, I always ask the children to sit and listen the word of God. Even if they don't understand anything, parents. Why? Because this is the time they are learning a character, a discipline, in order to sit in the presence and learning something. Even, even if they don't get everything what I speak, but there is a character which is formed automatically as they are sitting in in the presence of God. Very important. So, let me come back. What is the character which is basically need for the kingdom of God? Citizen. That's what we learned. Chapter 5, verse number 3 to 10. We learned the character. What was that? Those who are blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Your character must be Poor in spirit. Meekness. Pure in heart. Peacemaker. You know, it's the, you know, that is goes so on. These are the characters. And now, once you have this character, there is a function 
of the character must be revealed through your life. That is the place you are distinguished from the normal, ordinary people from outside the whip, outside the world. There comes your uniqueness. Praise the Lord. You know, after a few days, Esther, Sarah, all you will go to OSU or in you know, OU, no, um, OUCO. But before you go, there is something happening here. What is that? There is a character which is forming you. Not only that, as a result, when you get into your campus, you are going to function as a kingdom citizen. You know, I'm just taking their example. You know, you work in some other places. I don't know where you're working, but we all work in, right? You all work. But wherever you go, there is a function must reveal through you as a unique personality, as a kingdom citizen. That function, which I'm going to open up in this morning, which is called uh, the salt and uh, light. Hope you are getting something. Example, Jesus, identity, son of God. Character, what was the character of Jesus? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. No, example. Function through his, you know, through him. Jesus fed 5,000, 7,000. He was feeding the people. Functionality. Or he said, example, I am the resurrection of life and death. The character. The function, Jesus resurrected the Lazarus or uh, son of a widow in Nain or a daughter of Jairus. So functionally, he revealed his character. Hope you are getting me. Why I'm going so slow? So that you will get every, every, you know, basic thought. Okay. Okay. As a Christian citizen, as a kingdom citizen, we all have a function to reveal, function to manifest. What is that? As I already mentioned, the soul and uh, light. So, first of all, we will go with the uh, salt. I am, I am pretty sure I said about the salt and light a few months ago. But this morning time, in order for us to understand the, the reality of why Jesus has been written, that word, you know, that sentence, that, you know, that phrases, right after the, you know, Beatitudes. So, that's, so that we will understand why Jesus was literally thinking when he was speaking about that word. As I, as I said, it's not working. As I said, functionality of the salt. You might remember a couple of uh, functionality. I, you know, these are the things which I said a uh, couple of uh, months back. The number one functionality, I said, salt is a very valuable thing in the first century because the word salarium, that means uh, the Caesar used to give uh, wages to the soldiers as salt. You know, that is called a salarium. The word salary came from that word itself. So, you know, usually... Salt was a very valuable thing during those times. Also, in the Old Testament, we see 
if two peoples make a covenant to agreement you know they make a agreement they make a covenant on the basis of salt so that's what the uh, book of numbers chapter 18 verse number 19 probably you can read later i'm not going for the right now the covenant of salt then again we all know salt basically help us to seasoning you know seasoning agent you know basically we all cook very well as an indian malayalis or uh, you know yesterday we you know we had a very good uh, um, dinner from uh, Rekshan's apartment. You know, they cook uh, biryani and the chicken curry. And it was so delicious. You know, if you want to be a good cook, the first uh, requirement, you need to know how much salt you have to put. That is a very important thing. Right, Then, yeah. If you don't know, <laughs> properly to put the salt the the total taste will change upside down so it's very important proportionate amount of salt so as i mentioned salt it is an a seasoning agent that really uh, gives a taste for the food not only that Salt was one of the preservative agents during those first century. Or oh, even in our parents' time, you might remember our parents used to um, make uh, pickles or those achar, anything else with the salt? They preserve it. Eh? Kadumanga. So preserve food. So very important, preservative agent. You know why I said all these things? Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. What does that mean? Very, very important thing. As I already mentioned, there is a character formation. As a kingdom citizen, now, as a result, you must influence with that character. Hope you are getting me. You must influence the society with that character. Praise the Lord. That's okay. We both will preach. You sit there. That's okay. That's okay. You sit there. She's ready to preach. Probably she's going to be an evangelist. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you with me right now? What I said, what I said, the salt is influencing the curry, just like you are the influencer in the society. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One of the feature for the salt, I was just thinking this morning, you know, salt is the real taste maker for the curry. At the same time, after you put the salt into the curry, can anybody Identify salt. What is happening, Tony? Yeah. That will dissolve it. Wow. Praise the Lord. Once the salt gets into the curry, no one will see salt. But when they taste the curry, they knew or that the curry will taste because of the salt. Praise the Lord. This is what a kingdom citizen. What I said, you know, what I am going to say this morning. We are 
living in this world we are making the taste for this society basically as a kingdom citizen your presence your personality your individual life will make an influence to the society where you live praise the lord praise the lord hope you are with me very simple message but in coming days i hope the kingdom mysteries will be revealed one after another as i already mentioned salt is a preservative agent what is that preservative agent anybody can say that word is very tough word right anybody can say preservative agent preserving the food in those days there was no refrigerator so people your grandpa grandma those people they keep food preserve food with the help of the salt this world currently where we live is decaying the morality the ethics the values look at the world the marriage the ethics you know you can just name it i don't want to name it but why this world is sustaining at this moment because there is some kingdom citizens living in this world amen amen hallelujah the best example i can say in this morning when god was going to destroy sodom and gomorrah but still god was asking to abraham can i do that wow and abraham was pleading for sodom and gomorrah because their wickedness was so high he was about to destroy and he was pleading and abraham said if there is 50 righteous people or kingdom people or salt in sodom and gomorrah don't lord do not do that god said no i don't do that but there was no 50 then it comes into 45 then it comes into 20 then it comes into 10 then later none in sodom and gomorrah result the rain of fire and the brimstone came into sodom and gomorrah and destroyed the whole land you are getting the message what i said you are the people preserving this earth hallelujah you are the righteous people that's why this world is not yet to destroy hallelujah even though immorality even though all these corrupted systems prevailing in this world but still because of you god did not send his destruction upon the land of united states of america why there is a kingdom citizen on this world at the same time take the salt you know i as i already mentioned tomorrow we will do you know experiment and is ready for that in order to make it taste for the curry you put how much the how much salt danny one grain of salt 
rather a bench of salt the word here you are the salt you that means it is not singular it is mentioned plural that means uh, you that means we are the salt of the earth praise the lord when we all comes together god will sustain this world hallelujah praise the lord if i talk about the salt i cannot i will not get the time to speak about the light okay but no i am just concluding you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under a foot what is the chemical word for salt sodium chloride we know that sodium chloride will never lose its saltiness then what will happen i think we discussed previously if mixed with some dirt or some other chemicals it can get contaminated the same manner you are the influencer of the world but at the same time if you contaminated by any of the world system any of the world values any of the things in the world there is a problem you might lose its value in the kingdom of god we receive this simply i say compromising spirituality loses its value in the kingdom of god if you if you compromise with your spiritual life i'm not talking about uh, coming into church or not you know that is not what i said the real spiritual life that you are keeping 24 into 7 at your heart if you compromise with it with the worldly system and the values and the ethics what will happen as i mentioned it to be your influence will be unused in the kingdom of god hope you are getting that as long as you are salt you are influencing the world amen can you say amen you got it right as long as you are salt you are influencing the world but the time you are compromised with some other thing external thing that is the time on you are no more influencing the world you lost your power you lost your power that means uh, danny hear me as a kingdom citizen you have a power you have a influence you have a functionality to do this world but at the time when you compromise with something else you lose its value all right finally not working you are the light of the world what is the functionality simple sanisha what is the functionality of light shine shine on a hill you know i don't need to go further with that 
in john chapter 1 verse number 4 says jesus is the light of the world and you are are the radiant of his light basically, basically you are not the light no i don't have ex, i don't have time to explain all those things you are the radiant of jesus light as much as you gaze at the real light that much you will be radiant on this world okay that is another message but now you have a functionality what is that shining on this hill praise the lord hill but people can see this hill you know i was just thinking myself you know the past month i was landing in uh, kenya it is poor country the flight was landing on the nairobi airport i can see small small light just like candles you know you know when you land in basically dallas or chicago you know you will see mesmerizing light you know bigger light but there in a poor country small light but still that pilot could able to see that runway because of the small light praise the lord hallelujah when jesus said you are the light of the world that means the world is in darkness very wonderful the world is under darkness but you have a power to influence because you are the light radiance of his glory you are the candle so let me tell you one more statement you are placed on a hill and if you are going to live on that hill escaping from the hill just like elijah the functionality will not fulfill on your life so stay on the hill shine on the hill praise the lord not only that if you have a light the bigger light you cannot be hidden even if you wanted to be hidden you cannot people will see light through you praise the lord hallelujah there also comes another word that you you is not a singular that you is plural that means uh, why this city cannot be hidden because you that means we all stand together that brings a bigger light in the city not a small candle light when we all stand together there is a bigger light which is shine for this city my time was over 11 o'clock shall we all stand up in the presence of god hope you got the message what is your identity let me ask you child of god what is your character yes okay i can go from there actually you know and to said the salt of the earth your character basically chap verse number 3 to 10 your character pure in heart peacemaker righteous and a res- as a result you can function as a salt and the light of this world let me tell you brothers and sisters if you are not here on this earth this world does not have a taste if you are not here on this earth this world does not have a light you are representing his light you are representing his salt and you are making the, you are the taste maker of this world as we all close our eyes and this morning time can you just pray whether it is loudly or silently just pray for the god make me as a salt so that wherever i go 
I may influence others. As I am going to finish, let me tell you, your basic identity is salt. You know, I'm provoked to say one more word. You know, as I already mentioned, we all have an identity. We chose an identity, whether it is an Indian, whether it is Malayali, whether it is Pentecostal, whether it is charismatic. These are the identity that we chose. But this morning, the time, the question is, which identity we embrace it? Identity as a Malayali? Or identity as a Pentecostal? Or identity as a kingdom citizen? The problem, if you chose the identity as an Indian, the problem, you may not like outside the Indian. Because that is your identity. You cannot be salt. But at the same time, when you choose the identity as a kingdom citizen, you will be dissolved. People won't see you. But you will be the tastemaker for everyone, those who taste you. Whether they are Indians or Hispanics or African Americans or Native Indians, whoever it is, you will be the soul for everyone who tastes that food. Hallelujah. So this morning time, just pray. As a church, this morning time, just pray. Father God, we don't want any of the identity that we chose, but we wanted to stick on with the identity that you have given us, the identity as a kingdom citizen, so that we can be a taste. We can be a taste for others. We can be influence for others, Father God, so that people may see the good work in us, Father God. I am.